Saturdays at 9 p.m. To a world in chaos, facing destruction and unrest, we come with a message of peace, the peace that comes from the truth. We need your help to go forward on this mission. Support Shalom World. Shalomworld.org slash donate. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your so it's great to celebrate together on this uh, special moment. We've been having a whole day here with uh, the Oceania uh, mission group as we sort of have come together to uh, prepare and to celebrate mission in the whole of the Oceania region. And so of course uh, joining now too tonight is that uh, we have our regular charismatic mass and so thanks for coming along in this very cold night to join with us and um, let's together then uh, turn to the Lord and we always um, uh, praise in a sort of charismatic fashion which is a bit different um, from um, normal that's uh, you know we just allow ourselves to articulate praise that's not um, uh, English or French or Spanish or anything like that but this sort of sounds coming out of the mouth where the Spirit moves us to uh, praise God in wordless sounds. It's a beautiful gift. Okay, so we're going to have a time of praise now. Uh, and uh, oh, before I say that, some people have been uh, on the weekend may think that um, they've broken their fast by eating so late, unlike me. And so I'm giving myself a dispensation and I give you a dispensation too. Okay? Let's uh, praise the Lord. Huh?
God, we thank you that by your grace you allow us to be your sons and daughters. You lift us in your spirit to be who we really are in you. So, Father, we come before you tonight uh, weak and broken and sinful, but we know your mercy upon us. And dear Jesus, you are the only way to the eternal Father. And so we turn to you as our way and ask you, Lord, to have mercy on us upon our souls and all the weakness and sinfulness that we have in our lives. Heal us, restore us, and renew us. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the truth, the truth that sets us free. Lord, when we've given in to lies in our lives that fed by Satan, the father of lies and the prince of darkness, open our minds and our hearts this night to the father of light and life and strength. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you promise us the fullness of life. We claim that promise tonight, that the life that you have with the Father and the Son in the Spirit be more richly within us this night. In any way in which we've sort of wandered off in pathways that have taken us into uh, pursuits that are really contrary to the will of the Father, we turn back now. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. We have the practice here of the first collection going up at this time. Thanks. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, the number of disciples was increasing. The Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the Twelve called for a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You, brothers, must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and to the service of the word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles, who laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased, and a large number of priests made their submission to the faith. This is the word of the Lord. And all his works to be 
reading from the first letter of St. Paul, uh, St. Peter. The Lord is a living stone, rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, see how I lay Zion, a precious cornerstone that I have chosen and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you who are, who are believers, it is precious. But for unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble, stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was a fate in, the, in store for them. But you are the chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing praises of God who called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to John. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If they were not, I should have told you. I am now going to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father and then we shall be satisfied. How I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me. To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you.
So we thank you, Lord, for this moment when we can dwell on the graces that you wish to pour out upon us. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy that you've gathered us here with hearts open to you. We praise your name. So my friends, tonight is a particularly special night, the night of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So I invite you to come with me with an expectant heart that the Holy Spirit, who is the Lord and giver of life, will come more deeply into your life to bring his many graces upon you and open you up even more to that living personal relationship with Jesus who proclaims in the gospel, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way we discover him in a deep personal way is through the action of the Holy Spirit. He reveals the truth of who he is uh, through the Spirit given to us. And then we come to know who we are as sons and daughters of the living Father. Jesus came to reveal the heart of the Father to us. When he says there's many rooms in my Father's house, he's not only talking about when you go die and you go to the mansions of heaven, he's talking about right now. In the Father's heart, there's room for you. And he has his eye on you already and is trusting and giving you all the graces you need to open up to the gift of the Spirit this night. So that's what I invite you to uh, think about during the Mass, that at the end of the Mass we're going to have the opportunity to come forward and be prayed over for the Holy Spirit to come as like a new Pentecost experience. At the first Pentecost, of course, the Apostles and Mary were praying there and the Spirit came with fire upon them. Just as had been promised by John the Baptist. Remember when John the Baptist said that, um, you know, the one who comes after me, I'm not fit to undo his sandal strap, uh, but while I baptize with water, he baptizes with the Holy Spirit and fire. And so that Pentecost experience was a baptism, but like a baptism means simply an immersion, uh, a dipping into, a, a soaking in, the Holy Spirit, the fire. The fire of the Spirit to awaken in us uh, a new love for, for God and, and a new uh, understanding of God's purposes in our lives. And Jesus himself said, you know, I've come to bring fire to the earth. And he was longing for that to happen through his crucifixion and his resurrection when he returned to the Father. He was able then to send the Holy Spirit because sin had been overcome through his victory, through his death uh, and, and resurrection, he now at the right hand of the Father was able to give us that gift so we could live a new life. There are many Catholics who unfortunately live only half a life, as it were, uh, because while we've been baptized and confirmed, uh, what's been given to us is so hidden deep inside us that it's hard to detect his presence, right? And so what we're praying for tonight is that all of us will have a greater release of the Holy Spirit given in our baptism and confirmation. That, that will become like a new reality for us in a way that sort of opens us up more uh, to God, in the way that uh, he wants us to be opened up, really. Uh, it's, um, it's a beautiful gift. It's a big grace that God is giving to the church in these days. And it's important to remember that this is happening all over the Catholic Church. It's been happening since 1967, uh, where the Holy Spirit has been moving in a new way. And, and on nights like this, if we just simply open up and say, Lord, I surrender to you, I give over to you, come Holy Spirit, the Spirit can come upon you in a new way, and all that's been given to you already will be released in power and authority in a way that will surprise you, maybe. So let's be very open then to what God wants to do with us. It's very important, isn't it, that, that we come to know the love of God. 
Now, unfortunately, a lot of people walk through life without really experiencing the depth of God's love for them. And that's the Holy Spirit, who is the love of God, between the Father and the Son for all eternity. And this Holy Spirit, when he becomes active within us, he opens us up to the beautiful gift of God's love. And there comes a healing in our hearts, because so often because of um, you know, relationships that have hurt us and caused us to be, feel rejected or, or, or feel less than who we really are, that comes, comes to healing, and we're able to open up to Father God. As Jesus said, you know, uh, to Philip, he said, you mean, uh, I've been with you all this time and you still do not know me, because to have seen me is to have seen the Father. So the more we come into that knowledge of Jesus, the more we open up to the Father's heart. And the Father's heart is a heart of love. He wants to draw you more deeply into that. I had that sort of healing in my own personal life, which I don't, won't share all to that tonight because we'll be going too long. But um, it certainly opened up in a whole new way. My, uh, as the Holy Spirit began to be active, I realized that there were issues with my own personal dad that needed to be dealt with. And, and so having prayed about those and having dealt with those in a beautiful way, I was able to open up in a new way. The Spirit showed me the wounds of the past and I was able to open up in a beautiful way even more deeply to experience the love of the Father that God always wanted me to experience. So the Spirit will come in, in, in a particular way to each person in the way that's best designed for you. Because who knows you most? Who, who knows you the best? In, uh, well, of course, the Lord. And he knows what you need most, and he loves you totally and completely and unconditionally. And he wants tonight to just give to you uh, the, the touch of the Spirit in the way that for you is the best, Right? That's what's going to happen. And so let's really trust that. You know, I was a fellow traveler with this big grace of the Pentecost for a long time. I'd actually encountered it when I was a student in the seminary. I was at uh, Sydney University at that time. And there were these people. It was the very first charismatic um, group that ever sort of gathered in Australia. And I happened to be doing my study above that room, would you believe? And they made so much noise, I decided I'd go down and join them. <laughs> and they, uh, But I didn't surrender to the gift. You know, in those days, there wasn't much preparation. People would just be taken out into a room. And then they'd come back from this room. They, when they go out, they look fairly ordinary. They'd come back, they'd say, praise the Jesus, thank you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus. And I remember thinking to myself, steer clear of that room. <laughs> And I didn't actually go into that room, even though I liked their coffee and I liked their hugs. Now, nice people, right? <laughs> so I was a fellow traveller with this gift of the renewal. Uh, and that was the problem. And, and so I ended up getting ordained and everything. And, and then after ordination, after a couple of years, I was a bit sort of like, oh, is this all it is? That sort of feeling? <laughs> Isn't there anything more? So I went off and did further study. That's what religious do, you know, when they feel a bit sort of off, they go and do more study. It uh, doesn't necessarily help. So I ended up sort of coming back quite equipped. I had B BSc, BTH, MA, PhD. So I thought I had enough, you know, to change the church. But you know I didn't. <laughs> because there was a missing element. I'd had baptism, I'd had confirmation, I'd, I'd actually had ordination. I'd had three baptisms of the Holy Spirit. But, um, but unfortunately, like, inside of myself, this had not been released. And um, so some young people convinced me I should go to a priest charismatic retreat. And this is what I want to most tell you about because this is important. Uh, and on this retreat, I'm there thinking I'm safe, you know, 100 priests, so it's okay. And the preacher, uh, Tom Fryers from Rome, uh, he had this pitch. He, he, he just simply said, Brothers, he said, what you'd really be able to say is three words. And I'm really open thinking because I'm, what, what are these three words? And he said, I can not. You'd rather be able to say that. And I was at that stage where I knew that was true. Now I went to my first parish I was in, and um, they were good country people, really. Uh, lovely people, like you folk here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but they were very stolid, and uh, in those days we were just trying to get the music going and singing, etc., and everything. And, and so I, we got an organ and everything, and I stood up there and I said, um, got the music going, and 
will now sing. You know what? They did not sing. Uh, in the seminary, uh, I was told that they were God's chosen people. But these were actually God's frozen people. <laughs> and the big issue was, how do you defrost the church? <laughs> so I went off and did the further study thinking, that would defrost, you know. That just fogged up my brain. But um, I needed defrosting, huh? Uh, and that's what had happened on that retreat. So I, I knew I cannot. And he said, you've got to be able to say one more word. Yes. Yes, Lord, you can. And he said, join your yes with that of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I had a great love for the Virgin Mary, so that was easy. To join my yes with hers when the angel came and told her the impossible was going to happen in her life, right? And you may be sitting there tonight thinking, it's impossible for me to get filled with the Spirit. But when the, when the impossible was going to happen, right? She was going to be the mother of the Messiah. And she said, obviously, how's that going to happen? I don't know man. And the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you'll be overshadowed with power from on high. That's how it's going to happen. And so that's with her, yes, let it be done to me according to your will your word and so I got down on my knees and I just surrendered to this big grace of what we call the baptism in the spirit and I got the priest to pray over me and I thought I might explode or something but that didn't happen but everything changed from that point on in my own personal life there was some disorder that needed I, I didn't I had sinful patterns that needed to change and I didn't have a way of changing them but with the Spirit's power and work within me in a new way, I was able to call upon uh, the, what Jesus had won for us on the cross, the victory, uh, and, and break the power of sin that was dogging me so badly. Uh, by the grace of God, you know, this is what he wants to do. He doesn't want us to live defeated lives, just dragging ourselves through the muck all the time, or having others drag us through the muck. Like We, we, we need to be victorious. And it's by the grace of God. It's by the Spirit. So that when we surrender to the Holy Spirit, then he gives us a new power within us for personal transformation. It's a beautiful gift, you know. And then, of course, for, for ministry too. You know, the ministry was sort of going, wasn't going very well. But now when the Spirit came, there was a whole new movement for, for ministry, a whole new empowerment to proclaim the gospel to speak the word of God uh, in the spirit and, and, and the truth that will set people free. Uh, a whole new evangelistic fervor and a new appreciation of the depth of, of the scriptural revelation of the kerygma, the basic proclamation of the gospel. So all of this comes when we open ourselves up to the Holy Spirit and so much more. You probably can get that idea. I could talk a long time about this, but I won't. Um, <laughs> thank God for that. <laughs> but, uh, but it's true. We just be really open then. So that the main thing is to be surrendered to the Lord. Make it your yes. Not anybody else's yes. But your surrender to God. Your yielding of yourself to him. Say, Lord, let it be done to me according to your word, according to your will. No, you, you promised that uh, the Holy Spirit would come in power. And, and I, I want the Holy Spirit to come upon me. I want to experience what the experience at the first Pentecost. I want your Holy Spirit to fill me, to renew me, to, to, to grant me the graces that I need to overcome the, the patterns in my life I need to overcome for personal transformation and for, to be able to bring the ministry that you've asked me to do, Lord. I need you. I need the Holy Spirit. Uh, without you, I'm just doing my own thing. But with you, Lord, uh, we can cooperate with your grace and do a new thing for you. So don't be afraid. Sometimes people get a bit fearful that, you know, we're talking about the Holy Spirit and being prayed for for the Holy Spirit, and I'll just be overlooked because I'm not good enough or I'm just sort of a bit of a sinner. Uh, no, the Lord doesn't overlook anyone. Remember when Pentecost it says they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. All of them. And, and so here too. We'll all be filled with the Holy Spirit if we really ask him and, and give ourselves over to him. Not to be afraid that you'll be overlooked. Not to be afraid either that um, somehow um, 
if you really yield to God, then he'll ask you to do something impossible that you don't want to do. Look, the Lord loves you so much. He has a dream for your life way beyond what your, your mind could even grasp at this moment. But if, until you surrender to him and yield to, over to him, he can't achieve that through you. He's got a big plan for your life. But don't close your heart to him. Let the Spirit come and he'll unfold that for you in a beautiful way. That's certainly the story of my own personal journey. I had no idea uh, before the Spirit started to move more powerfully what he wanted in my life. And so for you too. So don't be afraid. You might think, oh, I don't want to do this sort of thing because if they pray over me, I might um, get embarrassed, you know, I might fall over or something silly like that uh, and make a fool of myself. No, he's not going to do that. He's not like that. He's a beautiful, gentle God who loves you tenderly and he'll meet you just as you most need to be met. That's how he'll come to you if you allow him to, right? So don't be afraid. It's just simply a matter of making that act of faith that surrender to the Lord. Lord, I'm in your hands. I trust you. Grant me this big grace of your Holy Spirit renewal in my life. Right? And ask and you receive, Jesus says. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. Now what uh, person among you, what parent among you, uh, you know, if the child wanted uh, bread, would give them sort of uh, a stone. Or if they wanted an egg, would give them a, 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 a snake. Or if they wanted a fish, would give them a scorpion. If you who, who know how to give good things to, to your children, how much more will the Father give you the Holy Spirit if you ask him? So it's simply a matter of asking. Come with an open heart, an open readiness. Now, if you bring just a little bit to the Lord of yourself, like say, if we use an image, you might just sort of uh, bring like a thimble. You know a thimble, the sort of thing they use? Very tiny. Well, he'll fill the thimble, right? <laughs> But don't just bring a thimble. Well, you might say, oh, I'll bring a glass and fill the glass. Yeah, no, it's, no, that's good, but it can, it can be better than that. Why don't you bring a big drum, huh? And then, oh, well, yeah, fill that, Lord. And then, oh, well, why not bring a whole thing, an ocean or something? <laughs> bring everything. You know, it's like uh, when you go and get a hamburger, uh, when I go and get a hamburger, and they say, what do you want on? They said, I want the lot. <laughs> right? And so that's it. Just bring, just bring all that you are, right? Open heart to God. Surrender to him. And this is a beautiful, you're in a safe place, in a secure place where people are looking after you. And don't be worried about what's going to happen. The Lord, when he comes, he's so gentle, he's so, so loving, he's, so, he's incredible. He's like you just fall into the ocean of his love. And let that sort of happen in a new way for those who have had it before and those who have, in a, for the first time, coming to this. Don't be afraid. The Lord's with you, and he's going to do mighty things for us this night, and bless his name. To stand to make our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. So we come to the Lord, confident in his mercy and his love, that he will answer the prayers of our heart. For the chosen people, uh, for the people chosen and consecrated by God, that this church may always praise him with reverent worship, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the rulers of nations, that they may recognize the service provided by the church and so respect her rights and freedom, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for people stumbling on their search for faith, that they may come to God through Jesus Christ, the only way to the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves, as living stones in a spiritual, spiritual house, that we may work with the energy and courage of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the dead, that they may enter that place Christ has prepared for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Just remember to Patrick Brady, whose um, anniversary occurs around about this time. And we do turn to you, Father God, confident in your merciful love towards us, that we are your consecrated people, your people set apart, people ready to worship and give glory to you. We wish your Holy Spirit that this may be even more true tonight than ever before. We ask this through Christ our Lord.
Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected by this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to Lord you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the, uh, with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> gives you praise. For well, through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, our Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, make holy these gifts we brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving it thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In the way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> the mystery of faith. His wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the glorious martyrs, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we will rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Christopher our Bishop, the order of bishops and all the clergy and the entire people you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and all who are pleasing to you as they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, O Son, forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. 
Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously to grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's offer one another the peace of Christ. the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
just have a moment of uh, reflection, just to be able to receive Jesus to yourself. And then I'm going to lead you through a prayer of renunciation of Satan and all evil spirits, and also a commitment prayer to Jesus um, as a way of preparing for being receiving the, um, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You might like to stand. I'll lead you through this prayer, which is a prayer where you are proclaiming yourself free from all evil spirits and all darkness. And we have Christ within us who we've just received. And then we make a commitment to him publicly, uh, following the prayer for that as well. And um, so then, um, having done that, uh, we'll have a time of uh, praise. And after that, then they'll be willing to receive any prophecies that might come forward. You know, as a prophetic word, bring it over to the team over in the confessional area. So let's stand before the Lord. Now keep your mind fixed upon Jesus. You might like to have your mind fixed on his cross. Because this is a strong prayer, but it's a prayer where we really feel it's important to loose, Lord, to loose us from anything that would bind us up, okay? So you say the prayer after me. Try and mean it from your heart. Through the, blood of Jesus, Through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed out of the hands of the devil. Through the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. Through the blood of Jesus, I am justified and made righteous. Through the blood of Jesus, I am made holy, set apart for God. On the cross, Jesus took my sins. On the cross, Jesus took my sins. That I might be made whole. He lacked all things on the cross. That I might lack nothing. He was rejected. He was rejected. That I might be accepted. And now I come to God in the name of Jesus. And I claim my inheritance. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit of God. Redeemed, cleansed, sanctified by the blood of Jesus. The devil has no power over me. I overcome him now by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. I loose myself from Satan's grip. In Jesus' name I declare myself free. I lift up my hands now and I praise God for victory in Christ. Lift up my hands now and I praise God for victory in Christ. Thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you for your victory, Lord. Thank you for your power and your grace. Beautiful Savior, Holy Lord, mighty God. Hallelujah, Lord. We praise and glorify your name. All glory to your sovereign King. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Now, with your eyes fixed on Jesus, let's make that commitment to him after me. Lord Jesus, I commit myself to you. Lord Jesus, I commit myself to you. I acknowledge you as my Savior and Lord. I acknowledge you as my Savior and Lord. I give to you all the memories of my past. I give to you all the memories of my past. I give to you my present experience. I give to you my present experience. And I place my future in your hands. I trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. And I give my heart to you. And I give my heart to you. I ask you to baptize me in your Holy Spirit. I ask you to baptize me in your Holy Spirit. Let's sing this song of praise.
part of my life Every step I take Always by my side I am yours, you are mine Be the Lord of my life Bless the Lord that he's the Lord of our lives so You might be seated now We're just going to sort of have a commissioning of those